Hello, my name is Skylar Spence and I'm a TAC engineer supporting the Cisco Catalyst Center solution. In this video, I will be discussing how to understand, design, and configure the network settings on the Cisco Catalyst Center physical or virtual appliance deployed in ESXi. The physical appliances provide four routed interfaces, each with one primary and one secondary physical network adapter. The physical location of these network adapters varies by appliance model. However, the logical configuration will be the same. The virtual appliance OVA creates only one virtual network adapter, but a second can be added if needed. The reason for providing multiple adapters is to provide, across a variety of network architectures, the flexibility needed to allow bi-directional communication between the appliance, the network devices which it manages and or monitors, the system administrators who need access to the solution, external integrations, and necessary cloud services. Let's start by reviewing these interfaces and their intended use. The Enterprise Interface is a 10 gigabit port on the physical appliance and is mapped to the first virtual adapter in the virtual appliance. It is meant to be the primary interface used to communicate with your devices, and in many deployments, this may be the only interface used for all network communications. The Cluster Interface is also a 10 gigabit port on the physical appliance, but on the virtual appliance, this is not mapped to any virtual adapter. It is used only for communication between Catalyst Center appliances in an HA cluster. The management interface is a one gigabit port on the primary network adapter and a 10 gigabit port on the secondary adapter. If a second virtual adapter is added to a virtual appliance, then it is mapped to the management interface. Some environments have strict network boundaries requiring the enterprise interface to be placed in a secured network in order to manage your inventory which then causes difficulty for the Catalyst Center admins and users to access it. The management interface provides these customers with the ability to configure a second reachable IP address. The internet port is either a one or 10 gigabit port on the physical appliances, similar to the management port, but is not applicable for the virtual appliance. In many environments, access to the internet or other external services will be restricted to only certain networks, such as a DMZ, the internet or cloud interface can be used for this connection. Each of these interfaces can be configured in the maglev configuration wizard with an IP address, subnet mask, a default gateway, DNS servers, and one or more static routes. The configuration wizard is accessible either during the initial installation or by later connecting to the CIMC KVM and running the sudo maglev config update command. In addition to these fields, you can also configure virtual IP addresses, or VIPs, for each interface you've configured with an IP. While the VIP configuration is optional for a single node deployment, it is required for deploying a three node cluster. The configurations that you enter will control the way the appliance initiates connections, outbound routing, along with how the solution configures devices to initiate their own connections for communicating with Catalyst Center inbound routing. Outbound routing, which applies to all network communications initiated by the appliance, is straightforward. The connected subnets, static routes, and default gateway settings from all interfaces configured in the wizard are placed into a shared routing table. When an outbound connection is created, the destination IP is looked up in this routing table to identify the egress interface and next hop router. The source IP address will be the local IP configured on the interface itself, not the VIP. Note this applies to all traffic, including DNS and NTP servers, regardless of which interfaces these servers are configured on. Inbound routing is what's configured on managed devices to control how they initiate connections towards Catalyst Center. It is very important that devices and clients access Catalyst Center over the same ingress interface that the outbound routing table points to for their IP address. If a client attempts to connect to the enterprise interface, for example, while the routing table for the client's IP address points to the management interface, then the traffic will be dropped. Therefore, the system uses an outbound routing lookup for each inventory device's management IP to identify the correct interface, and then configures the device to use that interface's VIP 
for connecting to Catalyst Center. If no VIPs are configured, then the interface's local IP will be used instead. In the case of an FQDN-only certificate deployment, the FQDN will be configured on devices, and it is up to the DNS architecture to ensure that the correct interface VIP or IP is resolved by the client. For disaster recovery deployments, the disaster recovery VIP will always be configured. Based on all this information, here is how to determine which interfaces are needed in your environment and how to configure their routes. Start by determining which of your available IP networks has access to the internet and other external services. Next, determine which IP network has access to the devices you will be managing. Finally, verify which IP network your administrators will be able to access. If all three of these roles can be accomplished from a single IP network, then you only need to use the enterprise port with a default gateway. If two of these roles need to be carried out on different networks, you'll need to use the enterprise port in either one of the management or internet ports. One port will have the default gateway assigned, while the other will utilize static routes. If each role requires its own IP network to operate, then all three of the enterprise, management, and internet ports will be used. The default gateway is assigned to the internet port, static routes to your administrator network should be configured on the management port, and the static routes to all device management networks should be configured on the enterprise port. Thank you for watching, and thank you for choosing Cisco.